Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over the settings that I use on the variable speed pumps on my route and at my house. And I'll go over how to set your variable speed pump for the most efficient run times and RPMs in this podcast. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. I think by now most people are aware of the money savings that a variable speed pump um, entails when you install one. Basically it lowers your kilowatt hour usage on your utility bill and that's where you get the money savings and I can definitely go over some of this in this podcast. But I want to start with how I set my variable speed pumps up on my route and my house for that matter to kind of give you the optimal savings and probably the optimal way to run your variable speed pump Everyone's a little bit different, but I prefer running my variable speed pumps on my route on just two speeds. It makes things simple. It also makes it easy for you to explain to the customer when their pump turns on. You know, they may call you and say, hey, I don't hear my pump turning on or I hear the pump humming. Is the pump running? And if you have, you know, four or five different speeds programmed in, it's really confusing to you and your customer of when the pump is running. You know, what that noise is. Is that, is that noise normal? Is the pump working? Is, you know, on low speed, is the water moving? And so for me, I think basically using two different speeds is all you really need. And I think that kind of goes back to the day of the dual speed pumps. You would have one high speed 3450 RPM, and then the dual speed pump would allow you to set it at 850 RPM, something really small, or 1100 RPM. So it's like a really low RPM based on the pump. And that's kind of how the dual speed pumps work. You would save some electricity because you would run it on the on the low speed for a longer period of time than the high speed. However, the high speed could not be throttled down below the 3450 RPMs. In case you're wondering, a single speed pump running at the full RPMs, and the RPM is the revolution per minute. That's kind of how they calculate the run speed. In some of the newer variable speed pumps, you will be able to calculate it based on the percentage of the pump running. Um, Hayward and Pentair allow you to do this. I think Jandy also. So you can actually set it as a percentage of your pump. So based on 100% being the full 3450 RPMs. So if you program your variable speed pump to run at 50%, that means that it's running about 1700 RPMs. If you run it at 80%, you're at 2700 RPMs. And that's where you get the energy savings by throttling down the full speed of the pump. And so if you have a variable speed pump and you're running it at 3450 RPMs or 3200 or 3300 RPMs, you're not really saving a significant amount of money. And you can find online calculators anywhere and you can enter information in there. And I went to the Pentair website. Pentair has a really good calculator where you actually enter your zip code. It'll give you your baseline kilowatt hour rate. In my area it's 19 cents, but then of course it's tiered. And so the more power you use, the higher the price is for the kilowatt hour. So there's no easy way to translate wattage use in the kilowatt hours because everyone pays a little bit different rate. But based on my base rate of 19 cents a kilowatt hour, and then the fact that I had a 1.5 horsepower single speed pump at my house previously, if I were to, and I ran it eight hours a day, if I were to install a variable speed pump and run it on these lower speeds, Um, Pentair calculates the savings for you. Let me pull it up here. So based on a single 1.5 horsepower pump running 8 hours a day in 14,000 gallons of water, I'll save about $1,022 by running a variable speed pump at a lower speed. The cost of the variable speed pump per year based on the kilowatt hours of 0.19 cents, which is actually a low amount because it goes higher with the tiers like I mentioned. It'll cost $130 a year to run the variable speed pump. And that'll take my kilowatt hours from 496 kilowatt hours to 56 kilowatt hours a month, which is an 89% reduction in the kilowatt hours. Now, this is achieved by running your pump at a low speed 
for a very long time. And so here's how I set my speeds up on my route and on my pool. I'll use a low speed, which is 1700 or 1800 depending on the pool. And then I'll run that pump at that speed for a very long time based on the size of the pool, 10 hours, 12 hours a day, a small pool, maybe eight hours a day on the low speed. And this is the primary speed you're running it at. So for the most part, you're running the pool at this low speed. This, however, means that the automatic cleaner is not moving, that if you have a pressure side cleaner, it's not gonna have enough power to generate the flow to that pressure cleaner. And so 1700 RPMs, 1800 RPMs is not ideal when you want to run your cleaner. And I'll go over the high speed or the medium speed actually and if you have a cleaner, what you need to do. And so the reason why you're running the low speed for such a long time is because you're running at about half the speed of your single speed pump. So if you were running your single speed pump eight hours a day, if you cut that in half, that would be 1700 RPMs, and that would mean that you have to run it for 16 hours a day to get the same amount of water through your pool that running a single speed pump at eight hours a day would generate. And so running it, you know, it's easy to do the math, I think, if you take what you're running your single speed pump at now, so if you're running it at 10 hours a day and you cut the RPMs down to half, then you have to run it for 20 hours a day to achieve the same flow. Now you don't need to run it exactly for 20 hours a day because you're gonna have a medium speed also running in there. You know, depending on how you wanna set that medium speed, you can set it at 2200 RPMs or 2400 RPMs and that will get enough flow generating in the pool to give you some turnover, to get the skimmer working, to get most automatic cleaners working. Now if you have a suction side cleaner, depending on the cleaner, you may need to boost it up to 2600 RPMs, maybe 20, 2800 RPMs, but I wouldn't really think you need to go higher than that. You just have to kind of play with the valves on your automatic cleaner, your suction cleaner to get it moving at about 2600 RPMs. That way you can maximize your savings. And since you have your pool running on the low speed for most of the time, you really don't need the cleaner moving in the pool for that long of a period of time. Depending on how big your pool is or how dirty it gets, I would say having that cleaner running for four to maybe six hours a day is sufficient. Before in the past, you would run it for eight or 10 hours a day, so it's not much different running that suction cleaner for a little bit less time in the pool. It'll still clean it really well. If you have a pressure side cleaner, putting your medium speed at 2200 RPMs or 2400 RPMs is definitely enough speed to get that booster pump working getting enough water pressure to the cleaner and getting that Polaris or Pentair pressure cleaner working or Hayward pressure cleaner working in the pool. You wouldn't need much more flow to, than that because basically that booster pump is gonna kick in and take some of that water from the main pump and running it at 2200, 2400 RPMs is plenty for that. And so if you notice in this example here, I have one low speed running for most of the day and then I have a medium speed running for a portion of the day. Now you can base your medium speed on your pool size, how many turnovers you want each day, but basically if you're looking at just straight wattage of a low speed, let's say it's 1700 RPMs, you're looking at about 130 watts that it's using as it's running at that speed. And so if you kind of do some math with a single speed 1.5 horsepower pump, let's say it generates you know 1000 watts every time it's running, and then you have a variable speed pump running at 1700 RPMs generating 130 watts. You can see that's 10 times less roughly in the power usage. And that's where you get your savings because you're not utilizing the full speed of that pump. Now the medium speed at 20, 2400 RPMs or 2300 RPMs, it's generating some more wattage. I think if you look at your pump, each one's a little bit different, but it can range from 400 watts to you know 450, 500 watts at the most, I think. And that's still half of what you're running your other pump at. And so running the medium speed, I don't think you want to run it for a very long time because the fact that it costs more to run it at medium speed and the low speed is doing its job of circulating the water anyway. The medium speed doesn't need to be set for a extremely long period of time. And again, you want to adjust that based on your needs. If you have a salt water generator, of course, you want to run that so that you can get the salt cell producing the chlorine. If you have a suction cleaner, you want to make sure you run it long enough so the cleaner cleans the pool. And you want to run it long enough so that the skimmer will actually skim some surface debris off the pool. Because running it at 1700 RPMs, nothing is really happening in the water. There's no movement on the surface. The surface may look a little bit dirty. And so a medium speed is a good way to get things moving and to have your pool actually look fairly clean. 
So none of the pumps actually on my route are set to run at a higher speed than a medium speed. So I don't go any higher than 2400 RPMs in most cases. Sometimes if there's a suction cleaner that I need a little boost on, I'll put it at 2600 RPMs. But other than that, I don't go any higher than that because then you start losing the energy savings of having a variable speed pump. The most savings is in the fact that you're running it on a low speed and then a medium speed and you never get that threshold of running it near the 3450 RPMs. If you're running at 3000 RPMs, you're getting close to running at a full speed at that point. And each time you take that speed down, you're going to definitely save money on your kilowatt hour usage. And if you're in an area like mine where the kilowatt hours are tiered, the first year I put a rail speed pump in my house, I think that was like four years ago or five years ago, I put a Jandy Flow Pro in there and uh, Flow Pro VS and significant difference right away because besides your air conditioner, the number one energy use of your household would be your single speed pool pump. And with both of those running, the air conditioner and the single speed pump, back then they had four tiers. And so I was always in tier four and they changed it recently in my area, Southern California Edison, to have three tiers. And I think, you know, that's even worse in a lot of cases because once you reach that third tier, you're paying a lot of money for your kilowatt hour usage. And so with both a single speed pump and the air conditioner running at the same time, I was always in tier four before the VS pump. And then, you know, setting the VS pump to run on a low speed most of the time in my pool with the medium speed, I keep it low on the medium side. I think my medium speed is set right now at 2100 RPMs, mainly because I don't have a suction cleaner in my pool. I have a robotic pool cleaner I drop in, and my salt system works really well at the lower RPM, so it's not a problem with keeping a good chlorine level in my pool running it at that speed. In the summertime, I may boost it up to like 2300 RPMs, but it also depends on your filter size, you know, how much gallons per minute you're pumping. All these are factors in setting your medium speed. And so the low speed is pretty much a no-brainer. Set it for 1700 or 1800 RPMs, and you're going to be just using about 130 watts per hour or per, you know, you really can't say per hour, I guess. But as it's running, that's the wattage it's using. And then you're going to save on a kilowatt hours there on low speed. And you want to run your low speed at least, you know, twice as long as you were running your normal single speed pump to kind of get a ballpark of, getting that, at least that one turnover on low speed in your pool that your single speed pump was getting before you replaced it. And so the low speed is pretty much standard summer and winter. I leave it running on low speed for 10 or 12 hours per day on my pool. It's only 14,000 gallons. And then the medium speed is the one that I adjust seasonally. So in the winter time, I'm actually running my medium speed three days a week and I'm running it for about four hours right now in the winter. And so the low speed's on constantly all week long, and then my medium speed comes on three times a week. And with the more sophisticated automated system, you can actually set it to stagger it on different days. If you don't have that kind of system, unfortunately, you're going to just have to run it every day of the week, um, which is okay. Just run it for a shorter period of time in the winter, and that's kind of equal to what I do by running it, you know, three days in the winter on a, on a medium speed. And then in the summertime, I will crank up my medium speed to get more water flowing in my pool just for the fact that I like having a higher chlorine level in the summertime and the fact that I just like having more flow in the summer and it's still going to save me a lot of electricity costs because I'm not running it more than the uh, 2200 rpms that I set it at even though if I increase the time it's not going to make a huge difference in the usage and so to make life easy for you with the variable speed pump have one low speed pump speed set to be twice as long as your single speed pump was set at. And then you're gonna have a medium speed set depending on your needs again, the size of your pool, and you know how much flow you need for whatever you have running in your pool at that moment. And then you just have those two speeds in your program. And it keeps everything very simple for you and for your customer. So if a customer asks you, hey, when does my pump turn on? Because I hear it humming and I don't know if it's running or if there's something wrong with it. You can tell them, oh, your low speed comes on from 7 a.m. it turns off at 5 p.m. and then right at 5 p.m. the medium speed will come on and run until 10 or 12 p.m. at night and if they have like a spillway or water feature you can adjust that so that you know if at 10 o'clock at night they don't want to hear their spa spilling over 
you can set the low speed to come on, I guess, 1 a.m. in the morning, turn off at 2 p.m., and then have the medium speed come on and turn off at 8 o'clock at night, and that way they're not kept up at night by the water spillway spilling over. So kind of adjust it based on the needs of your clients also. You don't want to have the higher speed pump running where it could disturb them if they have their pump next to their bedroom window, which is, you know, weird, but a lot of cases I've, I have that on my route where right outside their bedroom or bathroom window is the pump. So then you want to adjust it so that if they go to bed at 9 o'clock at night, you don't have any medium speed running there. So you can actually reverse it and have the medium speed come on in the morning and then have the low speed run all through the afternoon and night, and that way they're not being disturbed by that pump. Another thing you can do also, and I do this often, is if the pump has a freeze protect mode and it will come on, um, you know, like 11 o'clock, midnight, because it gets cold and it wants to protect itself, and so it'll act automatically turn on. You can actually set a low speed to run all night long from 11 p.m. to through the morning, and that'll bypass that freeze protect on a lot of the pumps. Or you can throttle down the freeze protect RPM, and I do this a lot of times with the Pentair pumps. And so when the freeze protect activates, when it gets to 37 degrees, I think that's the temperature, then you have your pump come on at a high speed and it wakes everyone up. So I'll throttle that speed down in the programming to 1800 RPMs. And so when the freeze protect comes on, you won't even hear the pump really come on, you know, at one in the morning. So that's some things you can do there to minimize the noise. And I think utilize the fact that on the lower speed, the noise of the pump is very pleasant. You don't hear it. You know, you may hear a humming depending on, you know, some vibration, depending on where it's installed. But it's like a really dull humming sound. And I really think utilize that with your clients so that if they're in the backyard, you know, in the afternoons, then have the low speed on. And then in the evenings, if they like to see the spillways activate, have the medium speed come on so that the spillways, the spa spillway activate. And if you're, you know, homeowner programming your variable speed pump, I would kind of utilize the same ideas. If the pump is nearby your seating areas or nearby windows in the house, just have the low speed run during the day and then set the medium speed where you're not going to be disturbed by it because you will hear the pump running at 2400 RPMs. Um, it's, it's not going to be as loud as running at 3450 RPMs, but nonetheless you're going to hear it. And so one of the selling points of the VS pump is how quiet it is. And so kind of utilize that when you set the time so the customer can see the benefit of how quiet that variable speed pump is. And again, I don't suggest running it at just low speed continuously without a medium speed because the pool is not going to look good. The cleaner is not going to work. The surface is not going to be skimmed. And it's going to be a pretty ugly looking pool. I think one of the main the main issues that I had with the variable speed pump when they first came out, I think I had my first one on my route. I'm trying to think back. Maybe 2007, I had an IntelliFlow on my route. And the main problem was that the installer set it for just low speed so it was set at 1800 rpms all day long and i was couldn't figure out why this pool looks so bad um, and so then i did some research and i kind of figured out what it needed and i set it at a higher speed i think i set it at like 2800 or something or 3100 something ridiculously high which i wouldn't set them at now but i just wanted to get that pool running and circulating and i definitely did notice a huge difference by having a higher speed in there Again, you don't need to speed that high. From my experience and the way I set my pumps, I really don't think you need 3,100 RPMs running in your pool. I mean, if you do want a short burst of high speed to really get the pool clean, I'm not going to object to you setting a third speed at, you know, 3,150 RPMs, and that'll definitely get everything moving. Now, if you're on solar, you can definitely set your VS pump to any speed you want because I don't think you're going to be impacted by any of the energy use at that point. But in most cases, if you really want to save the money, like at the Pentair site, I'll go back to the site right now and refer to that. If you had a 1.5 horsepower single speed pump running there, and you want to capture that $1,000 savings that the site says you'll get, then you're going to only have your pump set on a low and medium speed. And I think there was another site, I can't remember what it was, you can actually set the RPMs in there and get your calculations based on the kilowatt hours in your area. But basically... If you want to capture the savings and then the 90% reduction in the kilowatt hour usage per month, you're going to have a low speed and then a medium speed running for a short burst. Again, pool size, what you want that medium speed to do is going to determine what to set it at. And two speeds is all you need. 
the dual speed pumps kind of set the standard. It's very logical to have just two speeds. Some guys set like four or five different speeds. There's some controllers that take eight different programs. And then you have overlapping programs and you have no idea what's going on. So I think keep life simple for you and your customers by just using a low speed and a medium speed and leaving it at that. And then I'll give you a few cautions here. So now if you set your pump at these two speeds and you notice some water quality issues, let's say there's algae growing in a certain area of the pool or the cleaner's not really getting full coverage, then you're really gonna need to play with your speeds a little bit. Maybe cut the low speed back slightly, increase the medium speed runtime longer, maybe increase the RPMs of the medium speed. And as your pool filter gets dirty, you'll have to adjust the medium speed also because if you have a DE filter especially, you're gonna really see the impact and the flow with a dirty DE filter. Cartridge filter, not quite as much impact, and I really recommend that if you are thinking about getting a new variable speed pump put in, that you do get a new filter put in if you need one. And so, you know, you can really notice the difference in flow. If, say, let's say you had a 60 square foot D filter, and then you want to put a variable speed pump in there, I would highly recommend putting in maybe like a 400 square foot cartridge filter because you have a much larger filtration area for your pool. You're going to see a huge increase in the flow in that pool on the lower RPMs, in fact. And so the filter is also a factor that I think you need to consider. If you have a sand filter, the good thing about that is that it doesn't really affect it on a lower speed because there's really not a lot of resistance for the water. It's just sand going through the lateral, I mean, water going through the laterals through the sand. Not a lot of resistance. So you can run a sand filter on a very low RPM and still get really good flow on a sand filter. The only filter I think that you're gonna have problems with is a D filter as it gets dirty. The flow definitely is really affected by that. Um, and so if you have an old D filter and you're thinking about getting a variable speed pump and you want to put one in, I suggest cutting that D filter out, installing a 425 square foot, 450 square foot cartridge filter. And that way you can really utilize the flow of the variable speed pump through your system. I just recently replaced my 320 square foot cartridge filter with a 425 square foot cartridge filter. And I gotta tell you that extra 100 square feet, you can really notice the flow with the variable speed pump running on a low speed. At 1700 RPMs, I can actually have my spillway working in my spa. You can see the water flowing over. And with the 320 square foot cartridge, you weren't, I wasn't getting that same spillover. And the only thing I changed on my setup was I increased my cartridge filter size by 100 square feet. And that definitely increased the flow of the pool and makes it flow a lot better. So one factor to look at besides Setting the RPMs is also your filtration. And if you have an old D filter, I definitely recommend replacing it. Sand filter, again, not much effect on it. And if you have a small cartridge filter, let's say you have a 200 square foot single cartridge filter, I definitely recommend going to a 400 square foot cartridge filter. And you're gonna definitely see better flow in your pool. And this is definitely gonna translate into saving money on electricity costs. And so if you have to pay for a new filter, you're gonna actually recapture that money because that filter is gonna allow the pool to flow a lot better and then you can adjust the VS pump down even more. I'm even thinking about lowering my run speed down because the flow is so good in this last month. Um, but you know besides that I think you know when you spend the money on the equipment, the new variable speed pump, if your filter is old or if you have a D filter, I would definitely consider getting a large cartridge filter installed to maximize that variable speed pump and to maximize your energy savings over time. And so that's basically how I set up the pumps on my route. I have a low and medium speed running, and that's about it. And you'll find that this is going to be sufficient for most pools out there. If you have a really large pool, again, you have to increase that runtime. You may be running your VS pump 24 hours a day, and that's perfectly fine. It's designed to run 24 hours a day. It's not going to affect it in any way. The longer the runtime, the better, and it's not going to really do any damage to the drive on the variable speed pump because they're designed to run 24-7 anyway and it's not a big deal if you have to run your pool 22 hours or 24 hours to get that flow and to get that energy saving cost by running your variable speed pump at a lower speed for a longer period of time. And if you're thinking about getting a variable speed pump, I have a lot of different ones on my website you can look at. I have the jacuzzi variable speed pumps, I have a page on the Hayward pumps, and also on the um, Jandy variable speed pumps. And you can refer to those when you're picking a variable speed pump brand. I also have some podcasts on the best variable speed pumps out there. You can refer to that one also. If you're looking for that podcast or these web pages, you can go to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com. On the banner there, there's a podcast icon. Click on that. You can scroll down and see other 
podcast I've recorded on a variable speed pump. And if you're in, in the industry and you want to enhance your business, definitely check out the coaching program that I offer. You can learn more about that at PoolGuyCoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.